Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Bro here, and welcome to another Elden Ring video. Today we're going to be talking about what I think are some of the best dexterity weapons in the game. My plan is to talk about a few of the weapons in each weapon class and why I'd recommend them to you on a dexterity build and the one that I would overall recommend the most. And of course, after that, we're going to be doing some invasions, testing out all the ones that I would recommend to you on the pure dexterity build. Starting with the daggers, I feel like it really depends on the point of the weapon on your build. If you're going for any type of critical attacks, you're of course going to want to use the Misari Cord as it does have the 140 critical damage. Also has very comparable AR to all the other daggers, so it's not really lacking as a fighting option either. In fact, I'm pretty sure it has the best range out of all the daggers, so if you are going for actual fighting with the dagger as well, this is one of the better options. The Great Knife actually has an S scaling and dexterity, so it does get a little better damage output. Only 5 more, although it has much less critical damage and much less range as well. The Great Knife does have the added bonus of having bleed build up, although if you were going a bleed build, it's definitely not the best dagger, and if we had any investment in intelligence or faith or arcane at all, this dagger list would be different, but going off of just pure dexterity requirements, this one isn't terrible. The Scorpion Stinger is situational as it does have Scarlet Rot buildup. It's very easy to use a dagger to apply pressure to your opponent just to build up the Scarlet Rot, so it definitely has its uses. But the winner overall is definitely our critical dagger. 140 crit is amazing, especially if you land a parry you can easily one-shot a phantom. Definitely pays to always have one of these in your side pocket. The Halig Tree with Yuta. Let's see if they're waiting for me. Hey, they actually kind of look like they are. Hi guys. Hello. I pop your bubble, sir. Oh, that's not, that's the Moog bubble. Backstab? No. I want to parry him, and honestly, dueling those is a pretty good way to do so. I just need him to actually, I don't know, stairs are weird to me. They have some weird elevation to them. Whoa. Sleep? Random. Very random. Whoa. What's the other one have? Moonvale? Oh my, oh wait, that's not Moonvale. No, why couldn't you have Moonvale right now? That'd be perfect. Smack. <laughs> oh. Always looks like a defense bubble. Ooh! <laughs> the running heavy is a good setup into the parry, because it stuns them. Whee! Ow! That tracks rather well. Excuse me, sir. What do we got going on there? Boost your physical defense? Whoa. Do you just have not a lot of HP or what's going on here? I always panic roll that. <laughs> it's so slow. It's so unexpected. <laughs> I'm used to it now though. It's because I don't see people use it that often anymore. Can you parry it? Hmm, kind of risky to go for. Probably not going to go for it. It kind of seems like you should be able to, though. It is a sword swing, right? So. I wish you'd do other things. So I'm, I'm a request another move. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> there, we got both in there. We got to show the critical of the dagger and its actual fighting capabilities. Perfect showcase. <laughs> Moving on to the straight swords, we have the broadsword, the noble slender sword, and the ornamental straight sword. Now the broadsword is more of a strength scaling straight sword, although it still gets the highest AR when keen or lightning infused out of all the different straight swords, so I thought I would mention it if you want the highest AR one. It doesn't have the best moveset though, I don't really enjoy its R2 or its crouch attack. If you compare that to the noble slender sword which gets the R2 thrust as well as the crouch poke, the moveset on this sword is definitely a lot better. The broadsword also gets a lot less range, so if you are looking to outspace your opponent, the noble slender sword is the way to go. The ornamental straight swords a lot of people enjoy in dexterity builds. They have the thrust R2 and if you want to mix it up you have golden tampering to use the Ashabor to buff your weapon, actually pushing its AR over the other two, although the other two can be buffed if they are keen infused so they can definitely keep up with greases. The one bonus about using the ornamental straight swords is you can guard with the weapon while you get the dual wield moveset, so it's pretty easy to fake out your opponent with the guard to get the roll catch with the dual wield attack. I would probably still recommend using the Noble Slender Sword though. It has a little bit more range, and I like infusible weapons a little bit more. You have access to different Ash of Wars, where this one only gets its buff. It does get the unique R2, I suppose, but I think I still prefer having the Thrust Attack as an R2 mix-up from the dual attacks. So the overall winner of the Straight Sword Weapon class is going to have to be the Noble Slender Sword, in my opinion. Its extra range and the fact that it gets the Thrust Attacks really just pushes it over the edge for me. Oh, the Halig Tree. Wait, 
Are they outside? I'm guessing, sort of. Maybe. I guess so, based on that location, yeah. Oh, there they are. Oh man, I always almost jump over that railing. Like, I, I almost hit X, and then I realize it's a giant gap in the floor. Hi guys. What are we doing here? Oh man. I didn't see you. Okay, so we're gonna try a dual straight swords for this situation, I feel like. That could be pretty good. Um, he's gonna do a lot of jumping attacks, I think, personally. Hey, a whip. Oh. I'm also gonna do a lot of jumping attacks. This is what you want to trade with, because we have the multi-hit talismans. <laughs> dual straight swords have some really high DPS. Is that a dagger and a whip? And if you delay it, you can easily get a roll catch. Um, Yeah, we can maybe parry him, actually. Could be like a two-for-one and get the dagger off here. Hey, he's using daggers, too. Hey there. <laughs> oh, that's a good showcase of that attack, to be honest. We heal. My bleed's kind of high. Whoa. I know he wants to do- oh, that might be the end of Sam, actually. Yeah, straight swords on dex builds are just so good. <laughs> Hello there, heresy. Oh, dual daggers, I didn't really realize. <laughs> Next up, we have the great swords. Definitely one of my favorite weapon classes overall, so we have a few options here. The Claymore I recommend on every build. Its moveset is great. The R2 and its Crouch Poke are great mix-ups. Really easy roll catch tools. But when it comes down to the actual moveset of the weapon, I'm going to have to give the win to the Banished Knight Greatsword and the Knight's Greatsword. They have the jumping R1 to R1 true combo, which can even lead into the third R1 depending on how the opponent is stunned. A lot of the time I do land that by swinging my sword to the left to get the early hit, and it's just such ridiculous burst damage. These two weapons do lack having any thrust attack, but honestly the crouch attack comes out pretty quickly, so it's pretty good for roll catches, and overall just the standard R1 moveset having the range that it has really pushes it over the edge. And then we have the Flamberge, which is kind of my least favorite. It doesn't have any thrust attack, and it doesn't get the jumping R1 to R1 combo that the Knights and Banished Knight get, so it kind of lacks that burst damage. But if you are using it on any type of arcane build, of course, it does have the blood loss buildup, so you get some really good burst damage there. But on a pure dexterity build, it's definitely not my favorite. Now, if we're talking about dex with a little bit of arcane where you use the blood flame buff, at least it works that way because it adds the blood loss buildup to the weapon that already has it, so it's useful in that sense. But in terms of pure dexterity, it's definitely not the best, and I think I'd have to go with the Knight's Greatsword to be the winner. The Knight's Greatsword has the exact same AR as the Banished Knight Greatsword, but it definitely has more range, so that added bonus definitely pushes it over the edge. The Academy of Raya Lucaria with Stacy. Hmm. Stacy is in the back room over there. Hello, Stacy. How are you? Alright, so we have... How many are in there? Oh, okay. Well, it looks like... Oh, boy! <laughs> Maybe we should use our counter bleed setup here. Are we going to continue to bubble? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are going to continue to bubble. Hello, Snow. Pop your bubble. Good trade for me. <laughs> um, okay, you know, just because they're both using Moog, we're going to enhance our bleed defense here. Whoa. And there goes Stacy, while well, you just throw nice. That is the power of the burst damage, I guess I should say, of the Knight's Greatsword. <laughs> so good if you capitalize on one opening from one jump attack. Get all that burst damage. It was raining too much where I was standing, so I switched my location. But moving on to the Colossal Swords, we really only have one, the Zweihander. It has by far the lowest strength requirement and naturally scales dexterity, so you can poison infuse it, cold infuse it, keen infuse it. It's going to be your best bet on a dexterity build. The unsightly catacombs. Well, how unsightly of you, Franny. Um, you got to have a team in here though, right? Maybe? Kind of want to see. No? No? No team at all? Oh. Man, that is no health at all. That is not okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Franny. I really thought you might have a team in here. 
In terms of the thrusting swords, we have the Estoc and we have the Ansper Rapier. Both very good choices. The Ansper has a little bit less damage output, but it does have the Scarlet Rot buildup. That's very effective on a thrusting sword. This now does over max passive poise damage on the first swing, so it's very easy to pressure your opponent. It has good chase down with the running R2. So both are great options whatever way you want to go. But because this weapon has Scarlet Rot buildup and can still be buffed on top of that, so you could use something like the Scarlet Rot Grease, I'm going to have to give it to the Ansper overall. What do we have here? A bull goat. Well, hello, bull goat. How are you? <laughs> Sorry. Wait, how'd I get on this side of the horse? I don't even want to kill the phantom. I mean, not the phantom. I want to kill the phantom. Oh, <laughs> well, who's doing that for me? You know what? Let's put on some scarlet rot. This could be fun. Yeah, ooh, you don't like that, do you, Mr. Bull Goat? <laughs> Poke. Backstab. <laughs> oh! I wonder if that fire could hurt me. Oh, whee! Hey there. Oh, oh, I want to try to backstab with this. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> almost hurt double. Whee! Whee! Backstab? Oh, I almost went right in front of the bull goat. Oh, wait! That one was the host? No! <laughs> oh, we did Scarlet Rod him, though. Nice. <laughs> A good use of the, the grease on here. Moving on to the heavy thrusting swords, we have the Great Ape, we have the Godskin Stitcher, and the Dragon King's Cragblade. In terms of damage output, I'm going to have to give it to the Cragblade since it does have lightning damage, and the lightning damage is just the best elemental damage overall. But if you're planning to use your thrusting sword in combination with the Spear Talisman, you're going to want a pure physical weapon, and that's when the Stitcher is going to come in. This is probably one of my favorite heavy thrusting swords, although I love the unique Ash of War on the Cragblade. If you do stun your opponent and they try to attack into you afterwards, the Ash of War lets you poise right through it. It does immense damage. It's really hard for me to recommend one of these over the other. Because this has interchangeable Ash of Wars, it has more mix-ups, I suppose, so I probably recommend that on any type of dexterity build. But on a pure dex, having the Crag Blade with that option is always nice to have as well. Maybe keep both of these on your build for different situations. Oh my god, I've invaded Gandalf! I seen him! I seen a wizard! Hey, it's raining here. That's something. Blood Hex! Hi guys, how are we? What are we doing? <laughs> um, the ball fists. That's interesting. And Gandalf is a wizard. Whoa. Maybe this. Oh, <laughs> that's really funny. I'm a little afraid of the wizard pews that are happening behind me because they take a lot of my HP away. <laughs> This is kind of funny. What else do we have? Heavy thrusting sword. Well, this could be for the wizard. Oh my god. It's amazing how well that can do. Just hitting L2. Truly. And then you have the option of just R1, you know? <laughs> what about the ball here? Ooh, this could be something. I kind of want to snipe. I didn't think that would hit him. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, Blood Hex. Um, the ball might hit one of us. But it's not gonna be me. Oh wait. Does the ball still spawn here or what? Yep. It indeed does. Hi there, I'm coming, see you. <laughs> well, that was an interesting fight to say the least. Moving on to the Curve Sword class, we have the Shamshir, we have the Bandit's Curve Sword, and the Scavenger's Curve Sword. All good in different scenarios. I would say the Bandit's is the best if you want burst damage and to be aggressive overall, as it does have the highest AR out of the three. I think the Scavenger Curve Sword is my least favorite. It works a little better on a Dexterity Arcane build, which is why I brought it out here, as it does have its uses. But on pure decks, I think I'm going to recommend the Bandit's Knight Curve Sword over it for sure. The Shamshir is my personal favorite just for its moveset. I love its attack patterns, but it definitely has quite a bit less AR on my dexterity build. 36 less than the Bandit's Curve Sword. So this is definitely the best option, especially if you plan to do wield the Curve Swords. Cave of the Forlorn. Hello there, guys. Oh, you guys are in unison. Hey there. I still have uh, invincibility frames here. I don't know if you should be doing that. What? Oh my. <laughs> okay, what was that absolute damage right there? That's ridiculous. Hyper armor is a beautiful thing, but like, wow. 
That's actually scary. Uh, I didn't realize I got poisoned though. That's a wall. Oh, it's, ooh, I'm so used to guarding after that was my own bad. <laughs> I don't do wield anything too often, except straight swords, I suppose, I should say. I do with those. Spinning slash. I do want to focus on the phantom first. Oh, damn. I didn't think he'd try to trade into that. He oh, there goes the host. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. They're really good at face trading when you're fighting teams that are really aggressive. They do so much damage if you attack consecutively. I do have the consecutive attack talismans too, but still. Next up, we have the Curve Greatswords. We have a few options here. Overall, the highest AR option is going to be the Bloodhound Fang, especially when two-handed. This thing severely outdamages everything else in its weapon class, especially since it can still be buffed by Greases, although you can't infuse it or give it any interchangeable Ash of Wars, so you're kind of stuck with Bloodhound's finesse. But this is a great option for burst damage. You don't always have to go for the second part of the Ash of War because it's pretty telegraphed, but you can use this to trade and get some crazy damage out of it. And then we have the Dismounter, the Omen Cleaver, and the Zammer Curve Sword. The Zammer Curve Sword I kind of put on there just because it's Ash of War is pretty useful. It's a nice AoE, has great frostbite buildup. I personally don't really enjoy its R1 attack patterns. I find what makes Curve Great Swords very strong is their standard moves. You can chain these for roll catches really easily. They already have amazing range. If you want interchangeable Ash of Wars, I think I'd recommend the Dismounter a little bit more. Its R2 is a great roll catch as well. If you get stunned by the R1, throw out the R2. People get roll caught by that all the time. For the Curve Great Swords, the overall winner is kind of hard to determine. In terms of damage output, I'm going to have to give it to the Bloodhound's Fang. It has the same moveset as the Dismounter as well, so you can chain the R1 into the R2 for the roll catch. It's Ash of War. It's a little slow on startup, but it catches people off guard all the time, and the damage on that is a little ridiculous. But the Dismounter is better at mix-ups because you have the interchangeable Ashes of War, so I like to use both, honestly. Oh, Fair Missoula with Snorbles. Hey there. That was a very hopeful Ash of War. Hey, you guys are both using the Bloodhound thing. You know, I could also join in. This could be wholesome. Hey there. I have it as well. Hey there. My turn. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Get jumped. My Bloodhound Fang over yours. <laughs> Whee! Backstab? No. No backstab, but R2? No, L2. He used an R2 while I used my L2. <laughs> Three Bloodhound Fangs, one invasion. Now we're moving on to the katanas. We have the Nagakiba, the Serpent Bone Blade, and the Hand of Millennia. In terms of range, the Nagakiba wins by far, especially when compared to things like the Uchi Katana and the Serpent Bone Blade. In terms of damage output, the Hand of Millennia definitely wins with the Nagakiba coming in last, but its range more than makes up for that AR difference. As well, it has the ability to have interchangeable Ashes of War, so things like Spinning Slash and any type of true combo Ash of War are going to work amazingly on this weapon. Don't get me wrong, the Hand of Millennia's Ash of War can absolutely one-shot on the right build setup, but it's kind of telegraphed. If people are ready for it, especially if you're 1v1ing in any way, it's going to be hard to land. In the invasions, though, when it's chaotic and you can turn around corners quick and then just pull the Ash of War out of nowhere, it's a great tool for killing phantoms. I threw the Serpent Bone Blade on here just to mention it, because it's kind of useful on poison builds. I really enjoy its unique R2, has some good pressure, but it definitely does not stack up to the other two. I just like having a few different options for you guys to compare each of the katanas to, but yeah, the Naga Kiba definitely wins overall, and the Hand of Millennia is a useful tool to have. Whoa, well this is quite the spawn. Hello there. Don't mind if I just do this though in your general direction, boys. This is the Phantom Deleter, 9000. <laughs> Hello there. Let me just get some attack bonus here. Maybe we'll go with some physical. So, you know, I use the Knight's Great Sword a lot. I don't think I fight with a katana too often. Not on its own. What? Hit you in the butt. Hey, a great sword. You know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Claymore myself. Definitely one of my favorites. Perry. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a good option. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> this is why the Hand of Millennia is a, a great tool to swap to. People expect it when you see the weapon, but if you swap to it, they're not really expecting the Ash of War. Now we have the Twin Blades. I brought two out just to compare them, but the Godskin Peeler definitely wins over the Twin Knight Sword on a Dexterity build. 
It has higher AR. I love this thing's running R2. It has the multiple hits, so it stacks really well with the consecutive attack talismans. And you can throw whatever Ash of War you want on it, of course. Spinning Slash is a great option. The Twin Knight Sword has a pretty similar moveset. It's running R2 is still effective. I don't think it's quite as good as the Godskin Peeler. Still a useful choice. I like to use this on my strength build. Overall, though, yes, the Godskin Peeler is definitely the winner in this weapon class. Oh, the capital of Ash. Hello there, guys. Stupid sexy joker. Hello. How are you? This is an interesting little battle spot. Hi, guys. Hi there. Oh my god. Hello there. I don't I don't quite trust your teammate. Hello. Are you AFK? Well, I mean, I'll fight if you want to fight. Um, I just kind of want him involved, but... Let's go. Begin. My man, come on. I'm not gonna kill you. <laughs> not, not that way, okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Why is your teammate not involved here at all? Oh no, stop guarding with those. Please. Good dodges. Really? Is that gonna help? These are kind of... The Twin Blades are pretty good at face trading. <laughs> Depending on the weapon they're fighting. Why would you not fight? Yeah. You could have helped them. Unfortunate. Moving on to the Axe class. I don't really have any contenders here. Axes are definitely not something I like to use on my dexterity build overall. But the Stormhawk Axe scales really well with dex and strength. And its Ash of War is just simply amazing for any type of aggressive teams. If they're chasing you down, just constantly attacking. This has great hyper armor. You can trade into them, get amazing burst damage off. I don't think there's really another axe I would compare or suggest you use on a dex build. They're definitely better suited for strength. I think I just seen the name Ant-Man. Hello, Ant-Man. How are you? <laughs> Let's get our defense going here. Ooh, so we have whips. We need Sir Whips to be really aggressive on me. Oh my god. heal we heal and we heal they think I'm coming down the elevator so they just <laughs> use that that's funny honestly we're gonna need these swaps this hey there <laughs> well, the host is dead. <laughs> How did the host live that, by the way? Didn't he, like, plunge attack the whole way down? That was crazy. We, we live that. And then the host fell in the hole. <laughs> Elevator wars still have their place. <laughs> Moving on to the Great Axe class, we have the Butchering Knife and the Crescent Moon Axe. Now, I think I would suggest using the Butchering Knife over the Crescent Moon just simply because of the strength requirement. Most dexterity builds are not going to have 25 strength. You can two-hand it if you have something like 20 strength like I have here, but I hate not being able to one-hand a weapon. You get that prompt whenever you swap to it that you can't use it properly. Just overall messes with me. In terms of AR, it of course is higher, it has better flat damage, but the scaling on the Butchering Knife is great. You get an A in Dexterity, you get access to a Great Axe, so you can use things like Waves of Darkness. And normally, I don't really have any weapons that can use that on my Dexterity build. And honestly, it's pretty light. You want to consider the weight of your weapon as well. Dexterity builds tend not to have very heavy weapons, so you don't have to invest as heavily in Endurance as you do a Strength build. Even though I love using Stormcaller on this weapon, you get to Roll Catch with the R2 as a follow-up. Very good. I'm definitely going to have to give it to the Butchering Knife on this build. I've used it before on my Dexterity build. I love its moveset. It's nice to have a weapon where I can use Waves of Darkness, like I said, and not heavy at all. Radigan's Toe! Hey, guys! Well, this might be over really quickly. <laughs> I'm glad one of you survived. <laughs> Alright, hostie. Let's have ourselves an actual fight with the weapons. We got a kill with the Ash of War, you know. Oh! Jesus. 
Are you rolling? What? That's a good representation of how much you can roll in Elden Ring. The Shagar weapon in his general direction. I think he'll attack eventually? No. Ooh. We gotta, we gotta make him roll into a corner. <laughs> well. That was the roll build. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, when I think of dexterity build, I don't really think hammer. There aren't many good hammers on a dex build, but this actually gets an A scaling in dex. Has pretty good damage output for being a hammer. Probably not my favorite weapon class, though, or favorite thing to use on dex, as I like having burst damage, and this kind of lacks compared to a lot of the other weapons. The same could be said for flails. I'm not really a huge flail enjoyer, but this gets an A in dex. Honestly, you can throw something like flaming strike on it, and they do better poise damage now after the recent update, so they might have their place. Just overall, I find the moveset isn't the best, not the best range. I don't really plan to use this as a main weapon for my dexterity build, but probably the best choice of the flail for the dex build. Hi guys, how are you? Bastion, hello, hello. Oh my god, a wizard. Well, Maraka-chan, I dodge your pews and I raise you a lightning flail. I hit your uh, colossal sword user. I hit them again. What is this? Oh no. Not the skulls. <laughs> we run away from the skulls. They're kind of like a deterrent. Oh. Okay, so some some death magic. That's that's cold. I don't want to go on to that. Will I roll catch you with this? Find out. Madness. You're just an all caster, huh? All right then. Prepare yourself for a great battle with the flail. <laughs> Get roll caught. What is your build? <laughs> You got bleed, you got sorcery. He's gotta be like a really high level fandom then. Who would use the Eleanor pole blade with wizardry? That's such a weird mix. <laughs> Take that. Take the flailing. Oh, some more explosions. We dodge that. Oh, I don't want to roll into it. Well. Hey there. Whoa, whoa. Wish we could backstab that. We can roll catch that though. Oh my god, no, not the not the wizardry. Oh, it stopped <laughs> touching me. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> Dodge the skulls. <laughs> Wizard, it's me and you, okay? I don't want to even hurt your host. I just want to hit you. Come here. Oh, well, I didn't think you would uh, tip me there, but you did. Let's... Alright, let's put on some regen. What would be a good thing to combo with this? We can't really backstab. I guess some stamina regen. Whoa! Are you gonna attack her, you think? I don't know. How does this do against shields? Well, not the worst. Smack! Take that. That has more range than I think. <laughs> we could parry. Jump attack? No. Whoa. 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 Jump attack. Get flailed. The flailing. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Ooh. I need to burst damage that one now. They're half health. Here we go this way. Alright, America. Are you out of FP or something? You're like you're like a very confusing build here. I don't know what's going on. Whee. Don't protect your wizard. The wizard's supposed to protect you. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, hyper armor. <laughs> well. Why is the... What, what, what is the summon doing while you get beat up? Like, what? What is going on here? Why are they prioritizing their own life over yours? <laughs> it's just rude. It's rude and inconsiderate. I don't like it. Surprise, wizard. <laughs> I guess they must be low on health. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Wizard down! Now it's just me and you, hosty. Me and you. And a flail. There is a blue in here somewhere, right? I think they'll come in eventually. We take that trade. Whoa. Whoa. No. Whoa. Into this, maybe? Yeah, that does combo. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Another one? Yeah, I kind of figured. 
Whoa. He likes to roll this way. Whoa. Yeah, that's good burst damage. Perfect. And then we end it. <laughs> Fun fight, Mr. Hosty. With your wizard arcane summon. <laughs> very different, very different. Now we're moving into some of the heavier weapons. We have the Great Hammers. I know you don't really think of that when you think of Dexterity either, but these don't have the highest strength requirement. I still don't think I would run 22 strength on many of my Dexterity builds. There's better options, but these are the two best Great Hammers that I could think of. I think I might recommend the Pickaxe, though. It has a little bit higher damage, and it's all Pierce damage, so if you do happen to trade, since it kind of is a Hyper Armor weapon, you're at least getting the Pierce damage on this. Nocron, but oh, <laughs> I was so confused as to where I was. Um, I'm thinking this tree. I think I thought right. Hey, it's dual madness spears. That's funny. Oh, you got a teammate. Oh, was he hiding back further just in case? Interesting. Let's eat some of this to enhance our defense to madness. Because that could be scary. What is that? Something strength? Bonk. God of strength. God of madness over there. Hell too. That's a bad call to use against the Colossal, to be honest. Bonk. Bonk. What in the heck? Bonk. My hitbox. Bad. His hitbox. Insane. <laughs> Oh, they're taunted tonguing. Hey, Red. Just need to heal really quick. I'll distract the Madness one. I'm kind of set up for fighting him. So you go for a Colossal guy. I'll go for Madness guy. Sounds like a plan, right? I couldn't really get the backstab there, unfortunately. For some reason, Phantom's definitely aiming at me more than the Wizard. Oh, he's definitely like higher latency, I see. Whoa. The poor wizard red. He got done in. Unfortunate. We dodge. L2. Schwoomple down from the storm collar. <laughs> oh, bonk. Yeah, the pickaxe has its place. I think it works well with Stormcaller. Moving on to the Colossals, I think I'd only recommend the Duelist or the Rotten Great Axe. They both get pretty good AR when Keen infused, honestly. 772 on the regular and 745 for the Rotten one because it has the Scarlet Rot buildup. They can both actually be buffed with Grease, so you could put Rot Grease on this one to give it even higher Scarlet Rot buildup, but either way, they both have really high strength requirements. Probably not my favorite thing to run on decks, but these might be your two best options if you're looking for a Colossal weapon. Ooh, Crumbling Faramazula with Atari. Um, oh, well, rolling this way. I hope that's the right direction. It is, hello guys. How are you, Atari? Hello. Backstab. Backstab. Ooh, that's going to do a lot of damage. Didn't even notice, but that's, that's a pretty good crit. <laughs> Whoa. That was the... <laughs> no. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, well, hey, I guess Colossals can be sort of useful on decks. <laughs> Next up, we have the Spears, and it really comes down to the Naginata and the Bolt of Grand Sacks. Both are really good for different reasons. The Naginata has the Blood Loss buildup. You can Cold Infuse these, Keen Infuse these. They're going to do amazing damage, especially when power is stanced. The same could be said for the Bolt of Grand Sacks because it does have Lightning damage, so you're going to get some really good damage output out of it that way. I think when it comes down to it though, the Naginata is definitely better. You have the ability to use whatever Ash of War you want. While the Bolt of Grand Sacks just has the Ancient Lightning Spear, which isn't the most useful in a 1v1 if someone's paying attention to you. This is pretty easy to dodge in my opinion. Great long range tool for invasions, but overall the Naginata has more versatility because it has the Infusible Ash of Wars. And the innate blood loss buildup can be ridiculous, especially when power stance you just constantly attack. Spears in general when power stance are just some of the scariest weapon setups. Well, hello. Oh, there looks like a team of three down there, actually. Hmm. I've been looking for an invasion that we can use the double Noggies on. <laughs> uh, it has to be three people. So, hi guys. 
the only way it's kind of fair. You look like you light roll, Trinity. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> we don't use these often, but... We are right now. I'm sorry, Leo. You know what? You almost deserve it. <laughs> the only downside, I guess, is they consume a lot of stamina, but, like, at the same time... It's fine when you do like half of someone's HP bar, you know? <laughs> I think only one of the spears hit each time right there, and it's still too shot. I don't know. <laughs> These need a rework a little bit. They need to do far less damage. <laughs> it's just, it is not okay. And they come out so quick, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We're just, we're showcasing the best spears. Yeah. Moving on to the great spears. I feel like there's only really a few choices for decks. Honestly, the Vikes War Spear is probably the best dexterity one, although it does require 18 faith. So you'd kind of have to be running a dexterity build with some faith investment. But the madness buildup is just ridiculous. You get it on the phantom hits, even if they dodge roll. So you can be very aggressive with this. You often see players run two of these just because they want the madness buildup and they just rush you. Because even if you dodge, you're getting madness buildup. It's definitely a problem having that type of buildup proc during a roll and you're stunned there from the animation. So I probably have to give it to that just based on that ability alone. The Lance is always a great option as well though because you do have the interchangeable Ash of Wars and it doesn't require any faith investment so it's not really taking away from the build at all. Overall, I think the Vikes War Spear is the winner though. Madness buildup is just ridiculous. I'm gonna say the War Spear is definitely the winner here though. You can't always dodge it and be safe just because the madness buildup is so strong. So its pressure is a lot higher. Definitely harder to deal with than someone just using a lance. Kaled with Drangleic. Ooh. Bringing back the Dark Souls too. Are you taunter tongued? Oh my god, is that the hand of millennia? It is. I'll let you kill the fight there, yeah. There you go. I'm coming in hot! Bonk. Hey, you have two blues. Oh. Hyper armor. Hyper armor. R2. <laughs> Hyper armor. Um, And the rolls ensue. Maybe. There we go. The double heal. Lance is uh, quite aggressive. It does eat up my stamina a little bit, though. Ooh, I want you to do that, actually. Huh, huh, huh. Perfect. <laughs> right into the waves of darkness. How you got two blues that spawned nowhere near you, I'll never know. They were probably down in the city, to be honest. Moving on to the halberds, we have the Guardian Sword Spear and the Banished Knight Halberd. But their damage output honestly isn't that comparable. Over a hundred AR difference when one-handed, and I think it doesn't really close the gap too much when two-handed. A hundred more AR when physical infused. That really makes the Guardian Sword Spear just the winner based on that. I also love its moveset. You have the jumping R2 to R1 combo when one-handed. The chase down, you still get the thrust attacks, and it does get this unique R1 moveset. That throws people off. I get a lot of roll catches with that. Now, the Banished Knight Halberd is by no means bad. Thrusting attacks are always very good. I just think that extra AR on a dexterity build makes the Guardian Sword Spear the winner. Mountaintop of the Giants. Well, they are pretty high up there still, I guess. Oh, wait, are they fighting the boss? They beat it and it sends me home. That's going to be rough for me. Hi, guys. How are you? Let's boost our attack, actually. Are we ready? We have some bleed going on over there. That does quite a lot of damage. Oh, boy. That does quite a lot of damage. <laughs> um, let's get our counter bleed measures going here. Whoa. Trade. Wow, when the halberd does as much as the colossal. That's hilarious. It's kind of scary, really. Rolling attack. <laughs> it's the last slash of that sword that really gives me trouble. Because you think you're outspacing it, and then you miss. I need to heal them. <laughs> Maybe we can get a backstab off. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. That's bad for you. This is pretty good for me, though. <laughs> 
Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> the most anime jump attack ever, though. Can we talk about that? That's pretty cool. He hit me throughout the air. <laughs> I like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought he might try to attack. Oh, we get a true combo to punish the Estus. That's really the power of true combos. The Estus punish is unreal. <laughs> Does a lot of damage. One fight, man. I want to see you had a really cool jump attack with me through the air. <laughs> it almost beat me too. On to the Scythe class. You really only have two choices here because the other Scythes have some pretty high faith requirement, I would say. Especially the winged one, which needs 24. If you want to cold infuse these, which I enjoy doing, you have to use the Scythe. It technically is the Dexterity Scythe. If you cold infuse the Grave Scythe, it actually gets the scaling from strength, so it's not as optimal. Although I definitely like this moveset more. This heavy I find catches people more. The regular Scythe's heavy is kind of unique if you fully charge it. You can combo it into Loretta's Slash, so some good burst damage there. Although people kind of have to walk into the fully charged heavy. Pretty easy to avoid, although I have landed it a bunch of times. It definitely is easy to dodge. For the dex build, I suppose I'll have to go with the Scythe, just because you can actually cold infuse it, and it still remains dex, I would say. It's probably the better tool here. A little Faramazula. Alright. Oh, they haven't even really entered yet. Or wait, maybe they have. They could be by the elevator. Or honestly, maybe we will now that the elevator is up here. This way they can't escape with it. <laughs> I feel like no matter what, when I have to go down an elevator, someone's always right by it. Hey there. Where's your teammate? Oh my god. You guys were camping it? Are you serious? That's amazing. <laughs> of course they were camping the elevator. What am I saying? <laughs> oh, that's good. The fact that they were like standing around it though when it was up there, that's that's glorious. <laughs> Truly glorious. <laughs> uh why are you kinda staying away from your host? Shouldn't you help him? Cause Yeah. <laughs> Cause that. Oh no. So I get backstabbed. Oh we don't have the backstab ring on. That's a missed opportunity. I didn't think I'd be backstabbing with my sight. So there's that. What in the... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. I didn't know he was heavy rolling. That's unfortunate. Well, we can have a ton of... We're just having a backstab field day here. This would be good for the dagger. <laughs> but, you know what? Sight does good through shield as well. <laughs> we... Oh, you can't strafe Colossal sometimes, unfortunately. I feel like that's a missed opportunity. We heal. Whoa. Does he not have any HP? Is that what this is? Yeah, probably. Hey, we guard broke him right there, too. <laughs> what about the fully charged R2? I will try to get it. The spacing is going to be tough. That did not do a lot of damage for what it was. Oh. <laughs> he really doesn't want this to hit him. There's a ledge there. Oh. Combo. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Nice. <laughs> well, fun fight, boys. That was an interesting experience. But I swear, every time I see an elevator, there's always a team camping it. Without fail. <laughs> For the whip class, the Urumi is just the winner. It has an S scaling and dexterity. I love its moveset. The fully charged R2 is great if people keep rolling into you. You can kind of pressure them. They'll get aggressive eventually, and you can hit them with the R2 attack. 549 AR on a whip, not too bad either, especially since you can buff it. So just overall a great dexterity tool. You know what? This, a 1v1, this is a good time to showcase the whip. Not the best in an invasion totally, but when you're 1v1ing somebody, the whip has great application. Just kind of has a hard time dealing with multiple opponents because it doesn't have the best burst damage. You can't really put like a huge hard damaging Ash of War on it. But it's a great 1v1 tool. As you can see. I can't see him though. Hey, the Twin Blade. <laughs> I don't use whips often either. Hi there. What? 
Its pressure is amazing. Yeah, it's it's a great 1v1 tool. <laughs> I guess I don't use them too much because you don't find many solo hosts in invasions. For the fist weapons, I'm going to give it to the Kassar. A lot of the fist weapons are strength oriented. This is a great dexterity one. It gets the running R2 to R2 combo. Really good pressure there. And pairs pretty well with the spear talisman since it gets a lot of pierce attacks. The running R1 great roll catch tool. Just, I think overall these might be my favorite fist weapons. Oh, the Mogwin Dynasty. Wait for me, guys. Hello there. Hey, it's, did, did they not see me? Oh, they seen me. They just didn't care, I guess. <laughs> All right, we stay full health here. Oh, will that bubble reach this whole thing? No, it will not. Now I have some landmass to fight on. We backstab you. Oh, we don't, apparently. Should have been a backstab. Oh, we can't backstab on an elevator. Oh, my God. This counts as an elevator. That makes a lot of sense. Ah, uh, they're safe from me on the elevator. That's a good choice for them. Well, we can use our fist weapons then. That's no big deal. <laughs> um... Whee! True combo. Follow up true combo. Oh, thrust. That did some good damage. We heal that. I can backstab him here though, if he lets me. Oh geez, I popped my bubble tear. Whee! We heal. <laughs> this has been a pretty interesting one. That has some good range. A little bit too good, honestly. I need some bleed heals. We pop off here. Get the heal. Make sure we have the blood loss heal. No, I can't go up with them. He wants me to fight him on the elevator specifically, which is which is fine. Did you leave the host up there? Cool. I like that. Whoa. Whoa. Combo. Whoa. 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 <laughs> well, fun fight, Mr. Phantom. You know what? I appreciate you. You didn't fog wall me. That's pretty cool. That was very cool. Ooh, ooh. Very fun fight, though. Honestly, this was an elevator fight and a half. I sometimes forget that this is even an elevator because it's so big. But yeah, you can't land criticals on here. <laughs> so <gasps> sad. Next up, we have the claws, and I decided to pull out the raptor talons and the venomous fang. The Venomous Fang, because poison buildup, is pretty strong, and when you do poison infuse these, they get the stronger poison buildup that lasts just as long as the regular poison. So it's a great tool for pressure, pretty easy to poison the opponent. But in terms of moveset and damage output, the Raptor Talons wins, especially if you consider the fact that it has an R2 to R2 true combo that's so powerful. You can use things like Endure, easy trade into the opponent, whether you want to fully charge it or not is up to you, but the damage output is pretty ridiculous. I also like to pair these with Impaling Thrust. When you fully charge this after the Impaling Thrust, they actually roll catch any panic roll. Saw that from Gigas Thickus. Shout out, man. Cool combo. It also works the same with Endure. Usually people will run into you, attack, and when they see Endure, they roll away. So you can easily just fully charge it, get a roll catch, and it combos into itself. So powerful. And the running attacks are great for chase down as well. The running R2 also combos into the R2. So I'm going to have to give it to the Raptor Talons. They definitely win on the Dexterity build, or even an Arcane build. They're just very powerful. Oh, we have some wizards in the house, do we? Excuse me. I'm, uh... I'm gonna let you keep doing that. Oh my god. It always blows my mind, the range on some of the pews, you know? It's not ready for it half the time. Hi there, guys. How are you? Where'd your teammate go? Why would he leave you? Does he know how scary- You just stood there attacking after you took 1,600 damage. You know what? Wasn't expecting that play. Caught me off guard. <laughs> Oh, and then, and then the host died to the death blade. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, you can see the damage output potential, though. That was just the running heavy into the heavy. <laughs> now the final weapon class, the Great Bows. We have the standard Great Bow and the Lion Great Bow. This kind of takes the place of the Golem Great Bow because the Golem one is definitely better on a strength build. But on a dex build, the Great Bow has a little bit more AR. And you can also use the Ash of War, which is Radon's Reign. You just put it on the Great Bow. So both are fine options, but this has less strength requirements. So I think I'd probably go with the Great Bow on my dex build. Oh, the Halig Tree. Oh, but they're all the way up there always. I feel like this spawns you in the worst possible locations. 
Oh, definitely worth the risk. Now I'm above them. Ooh. Hello there. Try to get him off the ledge. Oh my god, I was so close. Wait, this is it. Oh my god, sniped. Oh, and the host died. Perfect. Wait, there was still a phantom over there. No. We could have been a three-man team. Well, I got a funny bow shot. I'm happy. So that wraps up what I think some of the best dexterity weapons in the game are. If you guys enjoy this type of video, comment below. I'll do them for your different types of builds as well if you enjoyed it. As well, let me know your favorite dexterity weapon. If I didn't mention it here, it's interesting to see what you guys like to use on your dex builds. Until the next video, this is goodbye. I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.